Good afternoon and welcome to today's session on how to protect enterprise data on users' personal laptop. I am Prasanna, co-host of the event today. Let me introduce today's presenter, Mr. Vishal Shah, CEO and co-founder of Sinasoft Technologies. He is known as seasoned technology stalwart and inventor of specific patented technologies, a writer, a serial entrepreneur, an investor, and importantly, a go-to guy for MSMEs. This webinar is organized to understand data protection challenges when users have to use personal laptops for company's work. This webinar will also include live demonstration of best practices to prevent data loss, leakage, and theft prevention for users' personal or void laptops. Mr. Vishal Shah will explain challenges of data security related to work from user using their personal laptops. If you have any questions while you watch this demonstration, kindly write in question and answer tab in the bottom of your Zoom login. The panel will take up the questions at the end of the session. Alternatively, in case you want to ask any question in the end of the session, you may please raise your hand and we will activate your microphone to ask the question. At the end of this session, we will have a survey. Please, we would like you like you to fill the survey form. Vishal sir, can you please take it ahead from here? Yeah, thank you, Prasanna. And uh, again, uh, we are back with an interesting topic. This time it is a BYOD. We call it as bring your own device. So uh, there are many organizations who are evaluating this kind of environment so that they don't have to invest uh, in the assets and the assets are owned by the users. Assets belong to the owner, uh, users and uh, users can use it for the company's work. But there are certain concerns and challenges. So before I uh, start this particular uh, session on this specific topic of BYOD, uh, I would like to you know, uh, give some examples. See, sometimes in our professional career or in personal life, we come across certain things. You know, We surely know that such things, if we adopt, if we adopt such things, you know, there are great advantages. But we are not adopt. We are not able to adopt those things because of certain apprehensions or certain concerns or certain fears. So, uh, if I give you some uh, examples which are known to all of us, uh, one of them is uh, either a credit card or a net banking. You know, uh, uh, 15, 20 years back, you know, most of the high net worth individuals were not applying for the credit card. They were thinking that credit card means, you know, uh, it is it is not something healthy on their financial aspects of their own well-being. So uh, they were not applying for the credit card. Then, uh, you know, there were stories about a lot of frauds happening on credit card. And of course, there are stories, there are facts. Um, and such things, you know, such things created a lot of apprehensions, uh, a lot of uh, fear uh, in the consumer's mind. And it took so long for people to adopt uh, the credit cards. Same thing happened uh, with the net banking also. Um, I would, uh, you know, uh, uh, not be surprised if uh, any of you, you know, have not come across still some company which is still paying checks and they are not uh, doing online transfers. So uh, there are apprehensions, there are concerns which stops people to adopt certain, certain things which have obvious advantages. Uh, similar example could be, you know, uh, 10 years, 15 years ago uh, for an affordable uh, transport, people were uh, taking diesel cars, diesel cars. After that, uh, CNG, uh, company fitted CNG automobiles were options and they were available very easily. But still people took a long time to adopt uh, CNG vehicles for their city commute uh, because of safety reasons or maybe because of uh, uh, availability reasons like uh, one has to go long trip and um, the CNG is not available, what to do. This kind of, uh, uh, you know, apprehensions or fears, you know, stopped people to adopt CNG uh, vehicles for a long time after they were launched. 
and now people have started adopting it. Uh, the examples are endless. Um, we can talk about e-commerce also. Uh, 15 years back or 10 years back, uh, e-commerce was not something everyone was, uh, you know, uh, depending on to source the things or source the fashion, you know. Uh, after uh, in in few years now people have adopted e-commerce now we buy laptops on uh, uh, e-commerce website we buy uh, personal things uh, on e-commerce website which was not which was not the uh, you know a scenario a few years back because people had their own apprehensions that maybe i might not get genuine things or you know sometimes my money will be taken and i will not get the thing itself so all these things are uh, the examples of something, you know, which we know that it has obvious advantages, but we are not able to adopt because of our own fears. So BYOD is the same thing, I would say. Uh, BYOD, bring your own device environment in any corporate operations, you know, is something which has obvious advantages, you know, uh, on the customer side, on, on the user side, as well as on the, on the enterprise side, both. At the same time, most of the organizations are reluctant to adopt BYOD. Um, I'll tell you, uh, in Sinershop, we are 100% BYOD. Uh, we um, request most of our employees to uh, uh, use their personal laptops, or maybe we, uh, we persuade them to buy a personal laptop for work, and then we pay rental uh, to the employee so that you know uh, it is an OPEX for Sinersoft, and Sinersoft does not have to worry about most of the things. We'll discuss a lot of things about it. But yes, BYOD has its own advantages, but because of certain apprehensions and features, uh, we fears people are not able to adopt it. So now we will see how this particular webinar is designed. Uh, basically, we are going to look at various use cases of BYOD environment. We will also look at some advantages of BYOD. We are also going to look at uh, fears and uh, concerns or apprehensions people have about BYOD. Then we will have demonstration of one BYOD laptop and we will see what are the challenges. And then we will have a demonstration of certain solutions, you know, uh, which can very well take care of those apprehensions, those fears, and uh, organization can, uh, you, you know, use this BYOD environment to its own advantage without any uh, fear or without any risk. So we will see all these things in today's uh, webinar. So I would turn off my video and uh, now I would, you know, uh, share the presentation and I will take it forward. Yeah, so as I've explained, uh, we are going to uh, discuss this particular topic, you know, how you protect the data in bring your own device kind of environment. So very familiar use cases for BYOD, you know, like many organizations have temporary interns, especially chartered accountancy kind of organizations who have uh, temporary interns, you know, every year they have interns working for the firm and they want that, uh, you know, uh, those interns work on their projects on their uh, with their customers and they are supposed to give the laptop assets to their interns. But if there is an option to allow interns to use their personal laptop, uh, they can very easily, you know, uh, save a lot of capex as well as there are certain advantages they can avail. Work from home, as we know, after pandemic, it is uh, going to be a kind of uh, provision uh, required for every enterprise. And that is another very striking use case. Um, possibility of any lockdowns, like uh, now we have wave one, wave two, wave three kind of uh, pandemic. And anytime if lockdown happens, organization should be prepared. And at that time, it cannot keep the inventory of laptops, which will be given away to the employees when there is a lockdown. It cannot be. There are many instances where employees go on a long leave and they cannot attend the office and uh, they are supposed to work from home. So these are the use cases which requires uh, issuance of laptop asset uh, to the employee. 
and now that issuance of the laptop asset uh, might create a lot of budgetary issues for the organization because uh, um, when we give a laptop to an employee you know it is a capex second thing is that maintenance of the laptop is absolutely a gray area uh, who will maintain how will be maintained how it will be handled by the employee all these um, uh, all these apprehensions are there another uh, biggest uh, problem is hardware risk you know when we when when the enterprise gives its own laptop asset there is a hardware risk you know it might be broken it might be stolen and enterprise has to provide for insurance in byod you know uh, this budget issues of capex are completely gone in byod we don't have to really worry about the hardware because uh, employee is anyway uh, using uh, his own uh, computer so he's going to use it um, as a owner of the laptop um, when organization has very high attrition it cannot keep buying laptops giving away and then people leave the job uh, you know it takes back their laptop many a times you cannot give used laptop to your new employee and at the same time it compels the organizations to buy new and new laptops with every um, attrition you know every instance of attrition so byod uh, offers very good uh, uh, advantages because uh, it turns everything into opex not capex um, complete risk of the hardware is eliminated on the enterprise because now they don't own that particular asset uh, there are other risks also like uh, issue installation of pirated software and what not employee is completely uh, uh, away from enterprise is completely away from this kind of risk because it is not that laptop is not owned by the enterprise and in case of high attrition they don't have to worry about it because uh, when employee leaves the job that laptop also goes with the employee organization doesn't have to recover or organization does not have to reissue it to anybody else so these are the advantages of byod and the major challenges of byod is data backup you know how one can really uh, uh, take the data backup of a BYOD laptop because it is owned by the employee. Uh, another uh, concern is data leakage when confidential enterprise uh, data like design, drawing, ERP accounts, if that is all uh, you know, uh, accessed from employee's personal laptop, how will we prevent that data leakage? And third is remote application access. Every enterprise has its own legacy applications in terms of ERP application, in terms of CRM, in terms of some operational management, inventory management software, and they want their users who are remotely working to access that. So how one gives access of Tally or ERP or SAP B1 or any kind of CRM to uh, an employee okay, who is working from home from his personal laptop you know byod basis so these are the challenges so now first of all we will see the demonstration of the challenges and uh, you know uh, before we start that demonstration of the challenges i would request uh, prasanna to launch the poll uh, this poll is going to tell us about the audience you know uh, what uh, segment of the users you are uh, representing so kindly uh, help us with this poll so that i could know more about the audience and I can relate this particular session uh, in a better way. Yeah, so uh, we have 32% are BYOD users, 11% uh, are representing the owner or custodian uh, group of enterprise data, and 57% are IT professionals planning BYOD environment, yes. So we have uh, almost 68% of the people who have concerns and 32% uh, 
uh, percent of the people who are the users and who have their own uh, uh, challenges, you know, while using, uh, you know, uh, company's laptop or personal laptop for company's work. Great. So now uh, we will see the uh, challenges and we will see the demonstration of these challenges. So what we have done is uh, we have uh, spared one uh, laptop asset and we are going to uh, show certain challenges which are uh, you know, faced when um, we just uh, adopt BYOD without any provisions or without any planning. So the biggest uh, challenges would be, which I'm going to demonstrate on that laptop also, but before that, let me read out and explain that. The biggest uh, challenge is data backup challenge. Uh, now, uh, when we are talking about BYOD, uh, you know, that particular laptop might be containing the data of the personal data of the employee or personal data of the family members of the employee. And on the same laptop, there would be, you know, uh, enterprise data also. So segregation of personal and enterprise data is very, very important. Uh, if uh, organization provides for the entire backup of that particular laptop, then it will end up backing up a lot of unnecessary data for the enterprise because uh, on that laptop, apart from enterprise data, uh, the data of the employee's uh, own personal files or data of the employee's family member is also there, which is unnecessary and is not supposed to be backed up by the enterprise. So this is another challenge. Uh, there is no control on backup source, there is no control on backup destination, means uh, which files to be backed up will be completely at the discretion of the employee and uh, uh, which where files will be backed up is also at the discretion of the employee. Uh, even user can uh, stop the backup because he is all and all of his own personal laptop and there is no visibility on the backup, even if somehow you um, configure the backup, you don't know whether that backup is happening or not. Similarly, there is a data leakage challenge also on that particular laptop users, uh, uh, you know, files as well as enterprise files are also stored and that laptop requires USB access for personal use. It requires uh, email access for personal use by the user. It also requires drive access for photos and personal use. And uh, there will always be a apprehension that the enterprise data resides on the personal laptop. So if user goes away, you know, he quits, you know, what happens to the data. So these are the data leakage challenges very importantly. Uh, then um, uh, there is another challenge, which is remote application access challenges. You know, we want to employ to access uh, tally or ERP or anything, you know, uh, on BYOD laptop and how we can do that. So now I request uh, my technical team to connect to a laptop, which is absolutely BYOD. There are no restrictions. Uh, can we go to the uh, completely, just uh, completely open laptop, which is being used uh, as a BYOD, please. So now we are uh, connecting to a laptop, which is completely, uh, it is owned by the employee and completely an employee's laptop. And we will see those challenges. So can you go to my computer, please? Yeah, so in my computer, if you, if you uh, see, you know, there is a, a C drive access. In this laptop, there is only one drive. In case there are many drives, it would be there. Go to inside the C drive. See, Google Drive is also, um, um, can, you, can you just go back, please? So Google Drive is also uh, mapped over here. Uh, Google Drive is also mapped. Uh, go to the C drive, please. Now here, uh, what one can do in case they want to segregate uh, the data between enterprise and the personal, uh, you know, we have to create one folder in the name of the enterprise and we have to advise the user to save the data in that particular folder only. And in case we want to uh, back up that particular folder, uh, we can back it up uh, by using some backup agent. But at the same time, if you see here, nobody will stop the user to save the enterprise file in personal folders. And if this laptop is being shared by users, family members also occasionally, then they might also uh, able to see the enterprise data as well as they might be, you know, saving their personal data in the enterprise folder or vice versa. 
So this is something where segregation of the data is very important. And here we are not able to achieve it just by putting two different folders does not solve the purpose because discretion remains with the user. Similarly, uh, the discretion of whether the backup will happen or not also remains with the user. So if we see here, um, this particular uh, laptop might be mapped with personal Google Drive or um, personal OneDrive and user can take all the backup of the laptop on personal Google Drive. So there is no, um, there is no control on what data is to be backed up and there is no control on where the data will be backed up. So this is another challenge. Similarly, for the personal use, because the laptop is owned by the user, he would require access to his personal email ID. He would require access to unrestricted internet. He would require access to USB drive uh, or pen drives on his laptop. And at that time, uh, we cannot stop that particular user to copy the data from enterprise folder to USB or attach the data from enterprise uh, drive to uh, enterprise folder to uh, email or internet. So uh, this is a real challenge and this is a demonstration. So if we have a laptop, uh, you know, uh, which is which belongs to the user, we cannot simply give that particular access of enterprise data to the user. Uh, similarly, if we want to give access to our ERP or anything, you know, user can even export the data from the ERP and save it on his personal drive and then take it away. Similarly, uh, we cannot give access to our ERP to anybody, you know, because now uh, if we give, let's say, RDP access to ERP server or browser based access to ERP server then uh, user would know a lot of things about the credentials, IP address and whatnot. And then user can even uh, share those uh, credentials to somebody else who is not supposed to access your ERP from outside. So all these things are the challenges and this is the demonstration of, uh, of the challenges. Yeah, uh, can we just stop the screen? I want to show my presentation. So this was about the demonstration of the challenges. Now, before we move to the concept and what is the solution, uh, I would request uh, Prasanna to uh, again launch the poll, uh, which will let us know about any concerns you have and uh, what is your use case about the um, BYOD. Yeah, can you help us understand your perspective on these questions, please? Uh, Prasanna, this poll is slightly longer, so please extend it for 30 more seconds. Is everybody able to see this particular poll? Uh, I just need to confirm because we are not getting any answers from the people. Yeah, Prasanna, can you please confirm if this poll is uh, visible to everyone? The, um, yeah, few people can see it, few people cannot. Should they are I saying end this they are unable to submit. They are saying they are unable to submit. Should I end this poll and try again? Yeah, please try again. It is giving yes, poll yes. error. Yeah. Yes, sir, I have relaunched it. Yeah, now uh, can we confirm if we are able to submit or not? Yeah, now now people are able to submit, I think. Okay. Yes.
Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> a major uh, use case, 34% have a use case of temporary interns, 79% of have a use case of work from home users, and 45% have a um, are evaluating BYOD environment because provision and preparedness of lockdown type of disruption. Then, um, um, you know, another uh, um, question was, why do you consider BYOD compared to com uh, company given laptops? CapEx, 45% of the people, uh, you know, value uh, cap op OPEX over CapEx. Then 58% high attrition is a problem and company given laptop is an inefficient solution. And maintenance of company given laptop, 55% of the people are worried about maintenance of company given laptop. Uh, and what are the concerns, uh, you know, while allowing users uh, BYOD? 68% have a concern over backup. 74% have a concern over data leakage. 55% have a segregation of personal and enterprise data as a concern. And 55% have a concern of giving remote access to enterprise ERP or CRM BYOD. Right. So now uh, we will understand the concept of duo or concept of dual profiling. And then we will see how uh, that concept of dual profiling can be executed. Uh, and in the same laptop, we can allow the user uh, to work on enterprise data as well as for the personal purpose and all the concerns of segregation of data to data backup, data leakage, or feedback on the backup, or extending remote access to the um, uh, users of the applications like Tally and all can be very well resolved. So uh, this, is a, this is called as a black box duo. You know, it is a concept of dual profiling. See, in Windows, all of you are aware that there are multiple users you know, possible in Windows. So what we do is uh, there is a, a endpoint agent which is connected to black box console and that particular endpoint agent uh, can create two different profiles uh, on the same user's BYOD laptop. And one profile is for personal use, another profile is for enterprise use or for work use. So we will see that. So can we share the uh, console of the black box so that we can show how those personal and professional profiles are created. So this is a black box console and uh, this is a very unique idea and it is being uh, used by many enterprises, you know, on BYOD and they are getting the advantage of uh, BYOD. So now we will see how, how it works. So let's say if we want to create a user on um, a user on any uh, laptop, we just have to install Blackbox agent. And once the Blackbox agent is installed, that particular computer will be visible uh, on console. And on console, we can create a personal uh, personal user and uh, enterprise user. So first of all, open personal user. So now let's say if this is a personal user just click on the policy. We are not creating any policies on the person. Means the personal user can use all, all his uh, uh, resources. He can use uh, pen drives. Um, there, is, there are no restrictions on him on internet, as well as uh, there are no uh, restrictions on him as far as the applications are concerned. Please close this, yeah. Just this one, yeah. Uh, there are no restrictions there are so there is no restriction he can use so whenever he logs in as acct mgr dot personal in his laptop uh, he can use that particular laptop for the personal use now only two things which we are not allowing in his personal login is one he is no longer administrator of the system and two uh, he does not have access to C drive, but he has access to a drive, which is his personal drive. We will see how, how it works. So uh, can we log on to, uh, yeah, before we log on, let us, uh, uh, you know, see the professional profile. So now go to close this and go to a professional user. So now the same account manager user has a professional drive where uh, we are giving access to enterprise. We are defining VPN. We are defining application controls. We are defining uh, pen drive controls. Go to pen drives, please. Everything we are defining it. So when user logs in as a personal profile, no restrictions are applied. If user logs in as a 
professional profile, all restrictions will apply. So this is how um, uh, the policy will be applied or not applied depending on which role user is in while using the laptop. So if user is working on enterprise data, all policies will be applied. If user is working on personal for personal purpose, because he has logged into personal profile, the system will uh, find it out and it will not apply the policy. Now, first we will log on to the personal profile. Yeah, Rajra, can we go to personal profile of the user? So now we are going to a user's personal profile on the same laptop. So when we log on to the personal profile of the user, uh, can we go to the um, uh, system tray? We want to see whether black box agent is installed or not. Yeah, just show the system tray, please. Yeah, so here you see black box agent is installed. Now just see whether he's the administrator of the system or not. So in personal profile, user is not the administrator of the system. Now go to the this PC. But user has full liberty. User has, instead of uh, accessing C drive or D drive, user is having a personal drive on his own laptop. It is residing on his own laptop hard disk. He can go inside and he can, work, he, he can save all his data in this particular drive. And then he can continue to make as many folders, whatever he wants to do, he can actually do that on this particular. So this is how the person, this is only personal data. He does not have access to professional data. In order to access the professional data, the user has to log into the enterprise profile. Okay, user has to log into the enterprise profile. So what we have done is, we have uh, differentiated where user is saving his personal data and where user is saving his enterprise data. And we have made sure that user is not able to uh, copy his personal data to enterprise data and his enterprise data to personal data. And that is how we are making sure that uh, what folders we have to back up and what folders we don't have to back up. So this is a very, very simple solution to data backup problems and we'll see how. Uh, now, can we log on to the work profile of the user? Now here, just see whether agent is installed or not. It is. Just see whether uh, this work profile is the admin of the system or not. It is not. Now just go and uh, go to the, this PC. So if you see here, there is a professional account manager drive. You know, he does not have access to his personal account manager drive. Okay. So he cannot, he cannot transfer the data to or from the personal thing. And we know that if we have to back up, the agent of the backup should only back up this thing only. And we also know where it can be backed up. And there is no user's discretion in that because user is no longer the admin and he does not have access to the backup agent also. So this is how um, we have made sure that user's uh, um, backup is uh, taken and the backup of the enterprise data is only taken. Uh, and we also get a report of enterprise data backup only. So this is the first thing where we have solved the problem of uh, we have solved the problem of uh, backup. You know how we segregate enterprise data and personal data, and how we make sure that uh, users' backup is notified and is available for the report. So uh, uh, before we go to the security data leakage part and then uh, access of the enterprise application part, uh, I would like to play a video uh, for everyone's understanding. So uh, I will just uh, play a video. Uh, so now what does this video mean? You know, it is very lucid and very simple explanation of this entire concept of data segregation for the backup purpose. And uh, just go through this video um, and then we will see the uh, uh, security part also. I'm just uh, opening that video.
Do you agree users laptops are never backed up as they are never available for backup? agree that backing up only enterprise data from entire laptop is a big challenge? Do you agree that your laptop contains your enterprise data as well as your personal and entertainment data? Do you accept that your enterprise should only back up enterprise data and should not back up your voluminous and huge sized personal data? Blackbox Dualite enforces personal and enterprise mode to access personal or enterprise data. Only enterprise mode data is automatically backed up on data center wherever the laptop is online. Now take the backup of only and only enterprise data. That too automatically on data center. So this was uh, an explanation about uh, you know how we segregate the data and how we make sure that only enterprise data is backed up and uh, we can also know about the uh, enterprise data. So before uh, that, let me uh, you know uh, give you uh, a dashboard. You know uh, there is also a dashboard in the black box. So uh, just a moment. Uh, So when uh, the laptops are being backed up, you know, uh, as a central uh, monitoring uh, for the IT team, they can very easily uh, monitor the backup of every laptop also. So this is a dashboard. And it can tell us whose laptop is being backed up and whose laptop is not. Yeah, we're logging into it. So if you see here, there are 17 laptops successful, one is incomplete in process and there are four errors. And we can actually find out whose laptop is giving error and we can actually uh, conclude that. So this is a good feedback you know, from uh, the system that whether backup is happening or not happening. Now, apart from that, uh, now we will see how uh, you know, uh, we can make sure that uh, data leakage can also be prevented. So I request, uh, you know, uh, uh, the technical team to connect to the professional profile and where we would like to see some 
data leakage possibility, uh, you know, data leakage possibility. Uh, so here, um, uh, as I had shown in the console that for the account manager, we have disabled the pen drive. Apart from that, disabling the pen drive, we have another option that we can have a pen drive access only for the inward transfer of the data, not the outward transfer of the data. You can also have a pen drive access for digital signature. You can also have pen drive access for some license authentication dongle, but it will not give an outward data transfer. So that is how data leakage prevention can happen on a BYOD uh, laptop. Uh, another way of stealing the data or leaking the data is email. So here, uh, user cannot access personal email IDs in this enterprise session. Can you uh, open the browser, please? mail.google.com uh, or something, gmail.com or anything. So user cannot open this drive. Now go to HDFC bank drive. So here you can define in enterprise profile which websites can be accessed by the user. Go to dropbox.com. So here in enterprise profile, Dropbox, personal mail ID, nothing happens. And user's mail would work. Go to webmail.blackbox.in. It would work. So you can control what user can access over internet. Now, in case this particular user wants to access uh, some websites which are not allowed by the admin, we have given a happy hours feature in this. So here, a uh, user can simply right click on the black box icon, right click on that, and then click on happy hours. So as soon as he clicks on the happy hours, uh, those internet restrictions will be removed and uh, just go to internet. Now go to dropbox.com. Open dropbox.com. So whatever was not allowed uh, during the enterprise session when user enters happy hours will be allowed. Now let's see what is happening to his data in happy hours. So just go to the data part. See here, all the all his enterprise drive is gone. He has got only download data. So he can access internet in unrestricted manner, only download the data. He cannot upload the data from his enterprise drive on his BYOD. Apart from that, just uh, exit the happy hours. Now let's say user wants to access enterprise data, which is in the office. Now we are first logging out the happy hours. So now the data is loaded, just go to my computer. So now the enterprise data is also loaded. Now let's say user wants to access something which is in the uh, office, you know, in the network and he wants to collaborate with some other users in the office. So he just has to right click on the black box icon, click, uh, click on VPN. We are not able to see this. If you can log off and log in, I'm not able to see this, this, yeah, VPN. And he can access the VPN and all the drives can be loaded. Connect. So here the BYOD user does not know anything about the which server to connect, which user ID password to do. Everything is filled in from the policy part of the black box duo from the console. And now if you see, apart from his personal drive, sorry, professional drive on his laptop, 
he has got all other network drives also uh, from the black box over VPN. So he can easily collaborate also. So it is just like while the user is in enterprise mode, uh, he is just like he's sitting in your office, he has access to all the data and uh, he can also access the data offline on his enterprise drive, but he cannot leak the data and the data on the enterprise drive will automatically be backed up. Now let's say, uh, uh, another challenge was about how access of application can be given. So once we connect to the VPN, uh, there is one, uh, one product called Blackbox AAA, Access Application Anywhere, which is also installed on this BYOD computer. We just have to double click on that. And then uh, certain ERP applications can also be accessed by the user over VPN in very fast way because this black box AAA will connect to the tally server or the ERP server and only transmit the keyboard and mouse uh, uh, activities and it will show. So now we are, the tally is loaded on his BYOD virtual computer. Uh, it is virtualized. So uh, this tally is loaded. Uh, you can also connect to uh, the uh, ERP also. So this is how we are in a BYOD computer. When he enters the enterprise, all the enterprise policies are given. Uh, his uh, ERP can also be accessed and whatever he exports from the ERP remains in his enterprise drive. And there is an option to encrypt this particular enterprise drive also, if the system is Windows 10. Windows 10 has native uh, uh, facility to encrypt certain folders. And uh, so that even user, if he takes out the hard disk, uh, you know, that enterprise data won't be available, you know, for leakage. So this is the access of the enterprise applications uh, on remote uh, computer. And this is a BYOD computer in which we are able to uh, connect to the enterprise data over private cloud or over, over the network or VPN. We are able to access the file as well as all the policies are in place. The moment he logs out and goes to personal login, all these policies will be removed. He will not have access to enterprise data. He will not have access to um, uh, the ERP or anything uh, which is uh, right now accessible in his uh, enterprise login. So this is how uh, this entire concept of Blackbox Duo works. Yeah, can you allow me to share the screen please? So now if we summarize and then I will also play a video. Uh, this black box duo is basically in personal profile. There is no access to enterprise data, no access to enterprise ERP application, no access to admin rights, access to USB personal email and full internet. So this is what it is in personal profile. In enterprise profile, access to enterprise data over a private cloud, just like I had shown. We have also hardened the device so that user does not have any discretion. His pen drive is controlled. His internet access is controlled. Uh, through happy hours only, he can access unrestricted internet. Similarly, off-premise cloud backup is also configured only in enterprise profile. So only enterprise data gets backed up. And then we have also seen how blind VPN works. Blind VPN means without, access, without having knowledge of uh, uh, IP address or user or password for the VPN, user is able to connect it and then access the data, whatever it is. And it happens on SSL. So at most uh, cybersecurity is also there. So this is how this concept of uh, Duo works. Uh, Prasanna, can we launch the poll? Um, then I will go to the next part. So uh, what I had suggested was a kind of perfect BYOD system where you can take the advantages of BYOD environment and do not compromise on security, backup or uh, remote access. So we would like to understand what is important for you in all these objectives. Yeah, Prasanna, I think people are not able to again um, submit the poll. Can you please uh, relaunch the poll? Yeah, are you able to uh, submit? Yeah, now people are, yes.
Yeah, I think Prasanna, we can end the poll and see the results. Yeah, so uh, what are the objectives uh, for a perfect BYOD system as you value? Uh, avoid backup of personal data, 41% think that it is an objective. 73% of the people want to take backup of only enterprise data. 68% want regular report and visibility. Then 89% uh, of people control, uh, they want control over USB, email and internet in BYOD environment. 38% of the people, you know, uh, want no control on USB, email, and internet while personal login, yes, it is his laptop or her laptop, they can do whatever. And 62% uh, of the people uh, want encryption of enterprise data for BYOD, yes. So I think it is in line with uh, what this duo is doing. Uh, so now uh, I can see a lot of questions. So before, you know, I, I need uh, two minutes time to go through all these questions and then I'll start answering those questions. Meanwhile, I will also uh, play a video which explains the laptop security part, you know, data leakage prevention part on the laptop by using Duo. We will see that. And meanwhile, why by the time you are watching that video, I will uh, go through the questions and uh, start answering them. Just a moment. worried about your data leakage or data theft from laptops? Blackbox Duo makes the laptop accessible under two modes, executive mode and personal mode. Enterprise data is accessible only in executive mode. Personal data is not accessible in executive mode. Executive mode is always loaded with all data leakage prevention security policies. Blackbox Duo Max for laptop security makes sure that your enterprise data is not stolen through pen drive, emails or internet. Now laptops are no longer data leakage points. Prevent data theft from laptop by Blackbox Duo Max. Yeah, so I'll uh, take the uh, questions now. Uh, so the first question is uh, by Mr. Acharya on BYOD device, how software usage policy is differentiated? Uh, will client be use, uh, be able to use any unlicensed software for personal use on organizational network? Uh, can such unlicensed software usage be restricted with the help of uh, uh, black box system? See, it is a user's personal system. So if he is using any unlicensed software, uh, you know, it is his discretion. It is not uh, organization's discretion. Ownership of the laptop is uh, uh, with the user. An organization can enter an agreement with the user to use his laptop uh, for enterprise purpose and uh, allow the organization to, um, you know, 
install certain software like black box duo so that data leakage prevention can be taken care of and uh, in black box enterprise drive um, you have application controls where you can define which applications he's supposed to use in his enterprise drive you know so let's say if user is supposed to use word excel uh, tally and autocad then he can only access that uh, autocad uh, tally word and excel but in personal uh, uh, space, whatever he is doing probably is not organization's liability. At the same time, uh, if you want, you can restrict the personal profile also. Uh, but for that purpose, you need uh, user uh, you need users consent. Then uh, you have another question: How the user personal data and organizational data segregated by black box system? and it can be encrypted or not. I think we have shown this. I think this question was asked before uh, uh, you know, we had shown that. So I hope you have seen that, uh, how the data is segregated and uh, you have an option to encrypt the data uh, of enterprise drive in Windows 10. Can Blackbox admin able to access BYOD device personal files? If yes, then same is required to be informed. See, uh, the user's personal file are residing on his personal laptop only. So in case, even if Blackbox admin wants to access it, the Blackbox admin will have to have remote access of that particular uh, laptop or a physical access of that particular laptop. And he will require the uh, he will require the password of the personal uh, personal login, you know. So uh, if it is any, if the if admin is trying to see personal files, you know the user would know about it. So uh, I don't think that it would be a challenge, uh, and users can be assured that you know uh, the admin will require remote access of the computer system. Then only he can have an access to their personal data. And giving remote access will be always in, uh, in the control of the user. Uh, what are the minimum system requirements for BYOD device to function with black box system? There are no minimum system requirements. Uh, uh, it has to be uh, the user's laptop should be sufficient to run enterprise's software. So let's say if enterprise wants to run Word, Excel, PowerPoint, then it should be sufficient for that purpose. Uh, black box does not have any kind of requirements. But yes, if that particular laptop is not sufficient to run those software which are required by the enterprise, then anyway, the entire purpose is not so. Are there any different models of BYOD management tools? If yes, no, we have only duo. Uh, we had explained that. Uh, whether procedure uh, to configure BYOD device different from laptop, tablet, or mobile, or same in all type of mobile device? No. Uh, this particular DO profile is available in Windows, which is different. It is available in Android and uh, uh, iOS, which is also different. And in Android and iOS, you do not have as many controls as they are in laptops. Okay. Uh, but yes, uh, you can have work profile and personal profile in Android or iOS device and accordingly you can segregate the data. You can, you can also control the internet, you can also control the USB on the tablet or mobile phone. Can we get a report of how much personal internet data is used uh, for office work? Personal internet data used for office work by VIOD device in case if we need to reimburse internet bill to the user. Uh, it is possible. Yes, it is possible. It can give you a report that how much data is being consumed for for enterprise work, you know, so whenever user is in enterprise profile, uh, there is a possibility that you can get a report that this is the internet which is being used. That is also possible. But nowadays, uh, it is not like that. It is very difficult to manage. You have analysis of every user's internet usage. Like in Synersoft, what we do is, we ask user to have this Wi-Fi uh, kind of dongle, you know, pocket Wi-Fi or a broadband connectivity. And we give lump sum 400 rupees or 350 rupees per month, you know, uh, to the user for using that particular broadband. That is, uh, that is simpler and easily managed. Uh, can we get report or instant alert if client attempts to breach any data through personal device? Is there any uh, live tracking or alert system? No, it is not required. See, um, uh, when when you add a lot of monitoring or 
when you uh, add lot of tracking it slows down the system so we don't do that you know from personal device uh, uh, if he is in personal login we are sure that he is not able to access enterprise data so we really we don't have to do that in there is there any system to permanently securely delete the data from client device in case client leaves the organization uh, no um, there are various legal aspects you know uh, because ultimately that device uh, is the ownership of the user and uh, we have we can do that but we don't do that we do not permanently or secure the delete uh, data from the remote computer because that belongs to the user and it is not really legal you can take the user's consent you can uh, take the remote connection and you can delete the data yes uh, in case you want that after leaving the organization if user has not submitted the laptop for deleting the data uh, you can disable the enterprise login so user will not be able to log in to the enterprise session and i think it will serve the purpose how secure and cost effective is managing byo device um, uh, with black box system what is the initial cost and how it can benefit in long term i think cost part uh, uh, yeah prasanna can you please help with the cost part offline uh, what are the standard byod usage policy as per black box system uh, in brief so i had already shared that slide uh, i will share it again just for everyone's uh, 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 you know uh, deliberation what are the policies just so these are the uh, standard policies no access to enterprise on personal profile no access to enterprise data no access to enterprise erp no access to admin rights and access to usb personal email and full internet this is a standard policy for personal profile uh, on enterprise profile uh, uh, access of blind vpn um, there is no users discretion on any policy uh, e uh, enterprise email access only happy hours access in case internet uh, restrictions are to be overruled um, uh, withdrawal of admin rights is always there and uh, uh, application controls usb controls and backup of enterprise data to the cloud so these are the standard policies for enterprise profile yeah. coming to the next question one more what if the case uh, the device is damaged or stolen how does black box system address the situation is company data safe can black box wipe byo device no we do not uh, as i clarified uh, we do not really wipe the device so if it is stolen uh, at the most you can disable the enterprise login and in case you have kept the uh, enterprise data encrypted using windows 10 then um, anyway your data is safe Uh, how is data secured on black box drives for remote access using pass codes or pins is there concept of login using mobile otp system no uh, there is no concept of pass code at all here if you had noticed when we right clicked on vpn and just click connect it connected by itself so there was no password used there was nothing actually the hardware signature of this laptop was recognized by the console through um the agent which is already installed and it knew that on this particular hardware for this particular user in his enterprise login uh, we have to give the vpn access so uh, when there is no passcode when there is no pin when there is no otp uh, you can very well uh, uh, ensure that this particular uh you know uh, data is uh, not compromised see uh, login using mobile otp system definitely is a compromise because if user wants to leak the data and if you are sending the password on his otp he can share it with anyone but here you are sure that he can do it only in his enterprise login he can only access to his enterprise login he does not know vpn so he cannot uh, uh, vpn details so he cannot connect vpn through some other system and whatever data is there in his enterprise profile let's say it is encrypted and he cannot take it out then uh, another thing is what are the basic precaution measures to be taken for better risk control of byod device what are the few common challenges in managing while uh, using byod devices i think i have explained those challenges uh, uh, elaborately 
like data backup challenges, data leakage challenges, access to the applications, and uh, whatever precautions are to be taken, as I had explained, we should have we should withdraw the admin rights. We should allow uh, personal data in personal uh, session and enterprise data in enterprise session, and uh, we have to make sure that all enterprise policies are there in the enterprise data. Another question is, can black box auto lock BY device in case device left uh, idle uh, for certain time? Black box does not need to do it. You can configure Windows uh, to do so. In Windows, you have an option. You can auto lock the device for five minutes, 10 minutes, and then it auto locks. Then user has to enter his uh, enterprise uh, session username and password. Uh, is there dedicated support service desk from Synersoft in case client not able to connect from BYOD device? What? Are the other support options available? So Synersoft operates on three different standard contracts. The first contract is 10 to 6, uh, 10 to 6, Monday, uh, Monday to Saturday weekdays, barring Sundays and public holidays. Another type of the contract is uh, 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. Um, and uh, the third type of contract is 24 by 7. So uh, the customer can um, have any kind of contract as per their requirements and working hours of the users. What BYOD device user need to know about black box system? Any necessary training need to be provided? No, uh, he should only know how to enter happy hours. He should only know how to connect the VPN by right clicking on black box, nothing else. How is backup of data from BYOD devices managed? Is it automatic as well as manual both? It is only automatic. There is no manual because here we are nullifying the discretion of the user. How is the personal data and organization data segregated for backup? As you know, uh, I have explained uh, in the demonstration that there are two different logins. There are two different destinations on which personal and enterprise data are stored. And the destination on, on which enterprise data is stored is only mapped with the backup uh, service and only the backup of that particular data happens. Uh, what is the best methodology of storing data for effective, effective remote work environment? Where should be the data stored? on the cloud or in the local. See, it depends uh, uh, on the internet availability to the user. Normally, you should allow one offline access of the data on user's computer system because many a times these users may not uh, have good internet connectivity and it might interrupt their work. So at Synersoft, what we do is we give them uh, one local drive, uh, that enterprise drive. And then whenever they want to connect to the uh, enterprise data on the black box, they can connect to VPN, load the enterprise drives and uh, submit the data uh, if they want or source the data if they want. So this is the most practical way of doing it. Uh, is there any way to track unusual usage pattern on BYOD device? What if user provides this device to someone else to use it? See, if user uh, provides uh, his device to someone else to use it, he will share his enterprise password and then someone else might uh, see that data, but he will not be able to take out the data from the enterprise if you have set the right uh, BYOD policies. Uh, Madhu is asking, consider this be used only for enterprise profile creation only and integrated with Google Workspace, where it allows only for one corporate Google Chrome profile to run. Uh, uh, to not use any other browser as well. Yes, it is possible. Um, it is possible. And we can demonstrate that also right now. Uh, Rajendra, can we show that Google profile uh, thing actually? Can we log on to that Google workspace and show that he cannot access personal? So here in this particular user, we will try to uh, do the same thing what you have suggested in your question. So here, by using black box policy, you will make sure that user has access to only Chrome. He does not have access to any other browser. And once he has access to the Chrome, I think uh, Rajendra, you have done it in Chrome or in Yeah, so user has access to Chrome only. There is no other browser accessible. And in that, we have got that one profile created. So can we go to uh, the google.com? 
mail dot whatever mail dot google or whatever so now if i sign in as a black box team just click on that on my enterprise google workspace i'll be asked for the password and then i can log in now let's say if i try to use uh, some personal email id try to it will give me a message that you cannot do that so what we have done is we have allowed only chrome through the application controls in black box console and then we have configured user one uh, google one sign in and then user can only use your enterprise drive nothing else and uh, you can also map it with this particular hardware yeah rajan you can stop the share so yeah uh, what you are asking is possible then mr robert is asking how can the user install application in his personal space see we are withdrawing admin rights okay so user cannot install applications in his personal space in case he has to he has to notify the admin and while uh, for some time admin can give him admin rights or you know it can be done but yes this liberty is not there user cannot install applications in personal space because he is not the admin how we can protect our vivod from ransomware attack by installing a good uh, good antivirus uh, how safe is using black box for backup data through external application uh, see uh, black box has its own backup system you know so you don't need to use any external applications uh, uh, you know to take the backup you know the, when you implement black box and subscribe to black box cloud or black box data center it will have its own application to compress and encrypt the data transfer it to data center or the black box cloud and generate the report it will not uh, have any external application will it work for linux and mac os uh, no uh, this particular system is available only for uh, windows based laptop duo and for uh, android and uh, ios devices uh, it is uh, uh, available but not for mac os and linux uh, mr rafi is asking explain about myod uh, yeah it is the similar thing uh, we are going to have a separate webinar for myod also uh, so uh, we will take it over there but yes you can have a, a android or a, ios device in which work profile and enterprise profile can be created in work profile you allow only email access and certain accesses in personal profile you can give access to anything like whatsapp whatever so that user can use whatsapp for messaging purpose but cannot take your enterprise data and transmit it on whatsapp so all these things can be explained in that particular webinar uh where will store the backup data in black box yeah so uh, when it is a byod uh, because we know that it is a remote user uh, the backup will be stored in black box cloud or black box data center as per your subscription plan uh, mr acharya uh, yeah it's great session there are always new insightful key of information that will greatly improve it management i would recommend to anyone in it each uh, a new webinar help building more confidence in the black box system thank you for organizing a very special thanks to oh thank you very much you know uh, mr acharya you are incessantly uh, attending our sessions and it is a great uh, encouragement i would say you are our webinar champion thank you so much yeah does it the, does it have a feature to do inventory and patch management of office systems uh, i'm speaking not consider byod yeah actually uh, i'll tell you our product development team is mostly focusing on uh, data loss leakage and theft prevention uh, so actually our design thinking does not uh, include any thesis for inventory or patch management of the office system so in this system or whatever products we are offering you know we are not uh, having that kind of variety you know of inventory and patch management office so yeah we uh, any yeah any other questions uh, uh, if uh, i mean we can extend this session for next 4 5 minutes in case uh, you want to ask any other question i think somebody also raised hand uh, can we uh, uh, you know uh, unmute uh, mr ravi prasanna mr ravi uh, who has raised the hand yes sir i am doing it
Yeah, Mr. Ravi, you you raised the hand. You have any question? You can now unmute yourself and uh, you know speak out. You speak out. Speak out. Uh, Mr. Ravi, you can unmute yourself and uh, uh, speak your uh, speak your question. Yeah, he may not be around. Uh, yeah, Prasanna, can we uh, you know um, uh, allow Mr. Vignesha's uh, mic, please? Yeah, Mr. Vignesha, you can. Unmute and uh, you know you can ask your question, please. Uh, my question is: uh, so we have the forcefully centralized data center, right, in uh, black box. So how uh, all the backup files are storing in uh, centralized data center? Uh, so we have to purchase the uh, device, right, in black box, or it is a cloud we are storing the, all the backup files in? No, it is your preference. Uh, so in case, uh, see, uh, uh, when we want to back up the data on the uh, cloud or uh, data center, the purpose of storing the backup is majorly disaster. You know, let's say the laptop is lost or maybe uh, laptop is disaster, uh, you know, destroyed, then you would like to recover the data from the data center. So you can subscribe to Blackbox data center in which uh, the backup of your laptops would be stored. You know, device, Blackbox device is on the other side, you know, which is in, in your office, or you can put it in premise, or you can put it in data center. Uh, in case you are putting Blackbox device in the data center, the backup of the Blackbox device can also be uh, taken on the cloud. So does that clarify your question, Mr. Vignation? Yeah, yeah, I got it. And one more question. Uh, so it is only support for Windows, right? Or will it support for Linux and Mac? Open no, this? it is only for Windows side. I'll tell you why, because our target segment is uh, typically, you know, any company which is having more than 12 computers and less than 500 computers. And uh, most of the uh, organizations who are into this, you know, uh, uh, they don't uh, use Mac systems so, uh, you know, uh, very widely, you know. So uh, that is the reason uh, our development investment is only going for Windows. Yes, for mobile devices, we have developed it for Android and iOS. But you know, iOS and Mac OS are very different, you know. Yeah, correct. Okay, uh, last one question. So yeah. what is the uh, licensing part? Do you have subscription model and... Uh, a no, no, it's a perpetual license. All black box products are perpetual license. So black box duo is also perpetual license. Black box device is of course your own ownership, CapEx, and you have perpetual license for that. And every year you can subscribe for the updates and support, you know. Uh, so that is 10% uh, of, uh, uh, of that particular procurement cost every year one pays for standard support. In case you want support from 10 a.m. to 2 a.m., 20% is the charge. And in case one wants support for 24 by 7, 30% uh, of the subscription charges next year onwards is the charge. So this is how uh, its uh, licensing is done. It is not... Uh, uh, it is not, uh, I would say, um, subscription based per user per year. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mr. Ravi, you were asking something. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Please go ahead. Actually, uh, since last uh, one month now, backup not happening properly. Uh, Mr. Ravi, are you uh, are you uh, giving some? I mean, are you, you have a question or you are asking some? You are you are informing something, sir? Yeah, it's a question. If the backup not happening due to some problem in the server, mm -hmm. uh, is it possible to do backup in the blackboard itself? Uh, backup in what? Blackboard itself, time being, because we are in the process of buying a new server. Uh, sir, I think you, uh, if you are the existing customer of uh, Blackbox, you can uh, connect with the support team. You know, this webinar is for dual uh, Blackbox duo, you know. So, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah in the interest of everyone else, uh, you can please, uh, Prasanna, can you please, uh, you know, uh, in intimate support and, uh, you know, connect with Mr. Uh, uh, Ravi to help him out on his query? Sure, sir, I'll do that. 
Yeah, I think there is another gentleman who also had a question. Uh, Prasanna, can you please allow him to talk also? Mr. Piyush Bausar. Hello. Yes, Mr. Bausar. <clears throat> uh, yes, sir. As you're talking about the uh, BYOD, that is bring your own devices to the, our company or office. Uh, let's say some uh, marketing person uses their uh, mobile phones. Right. Right. So we know the structure for the system, like uh, for laptops and all. But mm -hmm. uh, is it the same for the mobile phone? Because we don't know the hierarchy of the like uh, drives in. We know the drives in the system, but how can we segregate the data from the mobile? Correct. Yeah. Very good question. So we are going to have a webinar on this. But let me uh, let me uh, brief you about on, on that. Let's say you have an Android phone or iOS phone, uh, your yes. market people. So yes. as soon as you install MDO, you know, this is called MDO. Uh, okay. So uh, when you install MDO, there would be uh, there would be the applications which can be segregated for personal use and for enterprise use. Okay. So let's say, for example, you want uh, a mail application to be used for enterprise use. Then okay. that particular application can be accessed only if the user has selected enterprise mode in his mobile phone. And if okay. he has not selected enterprise mode, he will not be able to access enterprise email system. Now, the biggest challenge uh, of data leakage is through WhatsApp when it is mobile phone. Okay. Right. So, right. So normally, what people do is they use and, and see you cannot you cannot ban whatsapp you know people do a lot of productive things on also whatsapp correct yes definitely. Uh, but yes we are worried about the data leakage uh, on the whatsapp right so what yeah. what they do is uh, in personal profile they they allow uh, they allow whatsapp okay and in enterprise yeah. profile they do not allow whatsapp so if user has to access whatsapp for messaging he can very mm -hmm. well do it in his personal profile correct at the right. same time, he cannot attach any enterprise data in WhatsApp because while he is in personal profile accessing WhatsApp, he is not in enterprise profile. So whatever data is in enterprise profile, in case in in terms of presentation or in terms of attachments of the emails or any confidential mm -hmm. data, uh, he will not be able to access. So that is how you can very well avoid the data leakage through WhatsApp kind of application. Now, let's say user wants to access his email system on mobile mm -hmm. phone, then he has to compulsorily log on to sign into the enterprise and as soon as he sign into enterprise automatically the mobile usb uh, data transfer will be stopped the screenshots uh, application will be stopped uh, okay. he cannot he can save his attachment only in the secured enterprise folder in the mobile which is not accessible in personal profile so this can be done we can demonstrate this uh, in next webinar also okay okay Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Prasanna, can we allow Mr. Thakur to, uh, you know, ask the question? Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, hi. I mean, this slide from the Enterprise. Enterprise. Yeah. Actually, sorry. Somehow I, uh, I was busy with another meeting, right? So I'm not able to attend this session. So just I want to know, can I get this video, webinar video, so that I can reference in future and uh, we can uh, decide whatever uh, we want to protect sure. our data in our sure if so possible think, yeah, yeah it will be it will be possible don't worry sir it will be possible we are going to upload the video as well as uh we a person i will send you the link also please 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 yeah okay. yeah so i think uh, uh we are able to answer most of the questions and uh, i again uh thank you all of you to you know um be part of this session and uh um supporting us you know in your quest of knowledge and uh, you know uh, helping us you know uh, giving this platform you know uh, where we can uh, uh, we, we can really talk about technology we can show the technology and uh, I, I am really thankful for whatever time you have spent on this webinar thank you so much yeah over to you prasanna thank you sir this webinar was really very insightful on behalf of Cinasoft, I thank everyone for attending the session. We hope you have learned and enjoyed the presentation. Please fill the survey form, which you will get when the session is ended, to give us your valuable feedback. Thanks again. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you.